Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Uh, today's video should really be uh, a top of the hops, but what I've got for you is just too good. Uh, so I thought I'd put it into beer talk. Uh, I've just had a tour around West Mile Brewery. <laughs> West Mile are one of the 10 uh, Trappist breweries in the world. Um, what is a Trappist brewery? Uh, it's a brewery where the beer is brewed by monks or under the supervision of monks within the walls of a monastery. Why does that make the beer better? Well, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, so what I'm drinking here is West Mile Triple. They call it the mother of triples. Uh, it was the very first style uh, to be to be brewed in this way, uh, and they probably should have copyrighted the name. Uh, the name triple literally comes from the fact that it's got three times the ingredients of their single beer. Uh, their single beer being uh, West Mile Extra, uh, and that's what the monks drink in the brewery. Um, the monks started drinking simply because they're only allowed one meal a day, so they needed something to keep their strength up because they're working in the fields and they're praying for eight hours a day. Uh, so they started brewing uh, and then started selling the beer, everyone was loving it, and came up with these new recipes. Uh, the triple, I believe, I want to say 1930s, that it was, uh, it was first brewed. So what it is, is a, a yeast and malt dominated beer. So you get loads and loads of breadiness, sweet breadiness and a little bit of raisin, but also that sort of banana clove thing that you get from a German vice beer. Really, really lively on the tongue. You get a little bit of yeast funk from, from the Belgian yeast, but it's mostly sort of a bready sweetness, lots of sort of lemon, it's a little bit creamy. Um, you know, it, the, com the complete antithesis to, you know, the beers that are very popular today, the, the hop forward beers. So how do they go about making a beer like this. I mean, most breweries, they can sort of hide behind huge hot profiles. Uh, with the amount of malt here, uh, and sort of the, the focus of the flavors that they need, there's not a lot of places you can hide. That yeast sort of, those esters, those smells, those aromas that come from the yeast are very, very dominant. And if you mess up that side of it, you can end up with a pretty nasty beer. Um, so actually, unusually for an ale, uh, all the beers at Westmar are lagered, um, which means they sit for, um, Three, three to five weeks uh, after the brew, after the brew day, uh, and after the fermentation. Essentially, that lagering process is filtering, so all of the solids uh, slowly sink to the bottom, and you end up with a very clear beer. Uh, and while I was in the brewery, they showed me the difference between a, a completely fresh triple uh, and and one that's been lagered. Uh, the difference is remarkable. You get so much yeast, so much sort of tangy bitterness from that from that yeast um, when it's not been uh, lagered. Um, and then on top of that, they're put in the bottle, they're re-fermented in the bottle, so a little bit of yeast, a little bit of sugar's added. Um, and then it sits in the bottle again for about three weeks um, in, in a fairly warm room, um, sort of a room temperature room. Uh, it's lagered at 10 degrees, so you're not sort of killing off the yeast activity, but you are reducing it right down to a minimal level. Walking around that brewery is, is a very strange experience. It's very, very tranquil. Every blade of grass is perfect, which comes from the fact that you know the monks are looking after it for eight hours a day. Um, they do everything in eight hours, apparently. Pray, sleep, and work. Um, and it's, it's, it's a very, very strange, very sort of austere life. Not one that, you know, the craft brewers, where you go there, they give you a load of beer, uh, they sort of shout about their brand. Here at Westmar, they don't advertise. Uh, they, they literally just want to show you that making beautiful beer uh, is probably their second greatest passion after their religion um, and and from that comes the fact that they, they never advertise they never push their beers they'll never change their beers they've got their three beers they're very very happy with they're not pushing it in markets they're exporting it so that everyone can try it they don't do they forbid deals um, such as you know buy one get one free it's so worth picking out those Trappist brewers because all of them then because they're not commercially pressured all their money goes straight back into either brewing more beer or into charitable efforts or just you know for the monks livelihood so they can keep monking um, so those beers are very carefully made very well made almost without exception absolutely delicious because there's there's no rush they're not hoppy beers any of them uh, so they they lager them or they rest them they bottle ferment them they keep for many many years um, Westmont put two years uh, best before you can ignore that it will, it will be good for you know 20 20 years 25 years probably uh, so long as you keep it cool and keep it dark um, Orval, another wonderful brewery, uh, which we hope to do some videos on soon. 
Um, Chimay is the most famous. Uh, West Breton, uh if you can get a hold of it, is a beautiful beer. Um, but on that note, if you can't, get some Bernardis because they used to brew it. It's very similar and it's absolutely stunning. Uh, so at the moment, I'm in their uh, Trappist Cafe. It's just across the road from the, uh, the brewery in the monastery. Uh, and that's where you can come and drink all their beers and you can eat the food. Uh, and they, they have a bakery and a cheesery. Cheesery? Uh, on site, so we had some of their cheese and some of their bread. Uh, but it's, it's a wonderful sort of style of life here. I mean, I'd never want to be a monk, uh, but if I lived where the monks do, you know, you get your cheese and your bread and your beer all from the same place, all, you know, proper artisan kind of, you know, they wouldn't be called a craft brewery. Uh, but they're kind of beyond that, really. They've been doing it for over 100 years in some cases. Um, some of the best beer in the world is, is brewed by people that don't even drink it, which is a remarkable, remarkable feat. So uh, cheers to the monks. Keep monking, keep brewing. Uh, and I'll keep drinking.